Okay, this is just a quick video to show you some pictures of the laboratory equipment in case you can't um, utilize the maximum amount of time in class to kind of look over the equipment before the quiz. So our first um, piece of equipment is la labeled letter A. Those are graduated cylinders and they come in different sizes depending on how much liquid you want to hold. Graduated cylinders measure the volume of liquid um, and we use them all the time in the lab. B, the picture in B is going to be a glass stirring rod. We use glass stirring rods to um, stir different powders into liquids, um, make sure two liquids are combined. Glass stirring rods won't react to the chemicals that we're using because they're glass, but you have to be very careful because glass stirring rods are um, round so they can fall off the table really easily and shatter. C is going to be a hot plate. Hot plates plug into the side of our lab table. We usually turn them up on high. The lights will go on when they're when they are on. Uh, they they get really hot. The top surface gets really hot. We'll put beakers on top of that and boil water. Um, you want to be very careful around hot plates because you can burn yourself. D is going to be a ring stand. A ring stand is used to hold different items. You can have a test tube clamp um, attached to the main pole to hold a test tube up. Um, you can put a Bunsen burner on that black plate and heat something that's sitting in those circular discs. It could hold like a dish of some sorts and heat the powder or heat the liquid that's in it. So that's called a ring stand. It's used for holding different substances. E is going to be a scoopula, it's spelled kind of funny. A scoopula acts as like a, a chemistry spoon. Uh, we use it in, the, in our lab to scoop powders onto papers or scoop them into beakers. F is going to be um, a test tube clamp. You're going to pinch the middle of the test tube clamp and the outside uh, on the right side is going to open up and that'll hold the test tube. Uh, you got to be very careful because when you're holding these things you accidentally can squeeze the test tube clamp and then your test tube will slip out of that and shatter to the ground. So um, when you are holding this test tube clamp you want to hold the very end which is on the left side of this picture so you won't pinch it accidentally. G is going to be a test tube rack so the different holes will hold test tubes and in this rack you have two different levels so you can hold a number of test tubes. Um, I also like to put thermometers in that and I really like to put um, glass stirring rods in that because glass stirring rods and thermometers are round and they're, they're, they can easily roll off the table so when you're not using glass stirring rods or thermometers I like to stick them in the test tube rack otherwise test tubes go in that and they're round as well and they can break really easily so um, put whatever you can in a test tube rack. We also, when we wash our test tubes, we'll turn our test tubes upside down and we'll let the water drip on a paper towel on that bottom shelf of the test tube rack. H is going to be a test tube. They come in different sizes, but we'll pretty much be using one size in our lab. Be careful, again, because they're round and they break really, really easily. So we'll use them all the time. They're made of heat resistant glass, so they won't shatter, but you just got to be careful because they are made of glass and if you if you slam them against a beaker or slam them against the Bunsen burner nozzle they will break. I is going to be our thermometer. Um, these are alcohol thermometers, rubbing alcohol, they're not mercury um, and you just got to be careful with them because again they can break but also if you're rough with them it'll make the alcohol the red dyed alcohol inside separate and then they're worthless. So whenever we're using the thermometers, we just got to be really conscious that we have to be, you know, have a lot of um, care in the lab on those days. J is going to be test tube brushes. They come in different sizes. We have pretty much a medium size and a small size. It depends on how large your test tube opening is, but you use that to clean out your test tube. So you put a little soap on it and then you can brush it into the test tube to clean out whatever's inside. K is going to be um, tongs. They open kind of like scissors and you would hold them similar to scissors, um, but they're wider so you might want to use your whole 
um, palm, but they open up, they got rubber on the ends, and they're going to grab things like big beakers. So something that's really wide, not like a test tube because that's really narrow, but like a beaker would be good. And that, we usually use that if we need to get a beaker off of a hot plate and put it on the lab table, um, we'll use these tongs. L are going to be um, spatulas and they come in different sizes. We, we really only have one size and that's the second one down from the top. Um, and that's just used to move powders around. You're going to use it in a lab to mix powders together or look at individual particles. So we use that to maybe scoop up stuff but it's not really like a scoopula like a spoon but it moves powders around and separates things out. So that's called a spatula. M is called um, beakers. So beakers come in different sizes. Um, we'll be using all different sizes in the lab. Um, when you're done with these, we want to wash them out. We want to put them in the proper cabinet. Um, but also they'll be labeled. And not on that little white, you know, that white square that you see. Um, because that tends to not um, erase for the following years. I'll usually use a wax pen and I'll write on the actual glass. It's kind of like a crayon and you write on the actual glass and I will tell you like what's in that beaker so you don't get confused. Um, and, and those are, sorry, beakers are made of glass so you just need to act with caution because you can break the lip on the top of the beaker. N is a Bunsen burner and the nozzle will connect to a rubber hose that will connect to the gas input. Um, we will learn how to light these Bunsen burners with hopefully one match. Hopefully you'll get really good at it and you'll light it with one match. Otherwise we have lighters and stuff like that. Um, I try, you know, I don't like to let you into the Bunsen burners. We kind of go step by step. Um, and especially if you're nervous around fire, we'll go step by step. But I really want you to be um, independent and comfortable around the Bunsen burners by January, able to light them with one match. That's your goal for the year. Um, here is the rule. Write this down. This will be on the quiz. First, you want to light the match. Then you want to turn on the gas. Okay? Because if you do it the opposite way, what will happen if you turn the gas on and then you light the match? that gas will be coming out of the top of that Bunsen burner and filling that airspace with the gas so when you light that match it's gonna create like a little fireball right in front of you and it could light your hair on fire so we don't want to do that um, the rule is light the match then turn on the gas to turn it off you want to turn off the gas and then give it a little blow and that just ensures that any remaining flames are out um, and we usually we're going to be working with Bunsen burners with two people. Uh, one person is going to be operating the gas nozzle that I'll show you in class. The other one is going to be lighting the match. So your goal is to light it with one match by January. O is a picture of a um, conductivity tester. This is uh, like pretty old school one. Um, basically those prongs you'd put them in a solution um, that has metals in it and if it does have metals in it that top black piece will light up. There's a light bulb in there. Ours look a little bit different. Um, you stick the prongs into the solution and if the light goes off or sometimes it even makes a noise, I'll show you in class, um, then it conducts electricity. So whenever we're dealing with solutions that have metals in it we can use the conductivity tester and test to see if it if it does conduct electricity. So that's kind of fun. P is going to be an electronic balance. We're going to be using that to measure out in grams, so small units of measurement. Usually, typically powders, we are at the beginning of the year going to be measuring um, the mass of different cubes and that so we're going to be working with the units grams. So that's an electronic balance. In sixth grade you might have used um, triple beam balances where you move them around kind of like the scales at the doctor's office that you might see. Um, but we're going to be using electronic balances because they go faster and you know sometimes we don't have a lot of time in the lab to be using the triple beam balances. Q is eyedroppers and eyedropper bottles. Um, we'll use this a lot when we're, when we're dealing with different acids, um, silver nitrate, stuff like that. Stuff that we don't want to spill, we don't want to splash, so we want to control it, we're going to use eyedroppers. Um, so a lot of times the lab will tell you to place like 
five drops into a beaker or something like that. So you can do that with your eyedropper and you can be very precise. And R is a funnel. This is a plastic funnel shown here, but we have we have glass funnels that we don't use all the time just because they can break really easily. And then there's a big funnel that sometimes we'll use when we're doing experiments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the class.